Hello and welcome to the W.B. Mason Coaching Report on GoHofstra.com. Joined as always by the head coach of the Hofstra Baseball Program, John Russo. Coach, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Len. Let's get right to it. Look back at this past weekend, a three-game series at LaSalle in Philadelphia. Tough, tough series for the Pride. Lost all three games. Uh, you lose a heartbreaker in the opening game of a doubleheader, 4-3. Uh, 14-3 loss in the second game, and then a pitcher's duel in the finale on Sunday, losing 2-0. Uh, let's talk about this first game. You know, you have you score the three runs in the first inning, four hits, and then one hit the rest of the way. LaSalle chips away two runs in late, and then they get two runs in the bottom of the ninth to win. Uh, you know, what were your takeaways from from that game? You know, I, I, I say this. Last week I talked about um, – you know, we needed to practice better. We needed to feel better. We needed to do things better. And, you know, I thought we had a, a really bad week of practice. It started on Tuesday, went uh, Wednesday, Thursday. We decided on Friday to finally uh, practice better. And so, you know, we thought that was enough for us going into um, Saturday's game. And then Saturday we got off to a good start there in the first uh, inning, but it was indicative of the whole weekend, you know, us scoring early and then not doing it the rest of the game. I had said a few times during the game, I was like, hey, next team that scores next is going to win this game. Uh, Lascaux ended up scoring, I think, two in the sixth. And so, uh, you know, knew it was going to be a dogfight. Um, had a really bad break with uh, Jack Jett getting forearm tightness uh, there in the third inning. Uh, so I had to go to the bullpen early. Thought the bullpen was really, really good with uh, Seamus and Skid and Mirando um, to get us to Jimmy late. Um you know, really mad we weren't able to score more uh, in the first game. Uh, blow the game there in the ninth inning for our fourth, you know, time this year in six games, you know, uh, not being able – or fourth time in five games, not being able to close out a game in the in the ninth – or, yeah, in the after the eighth. And then, um, you know, got blown out in game two. We got an inning and two-thirds start from Steven. Um, you know, it was really hard. Uh, to only have four and two-thirds starts from your starters and 18-inning doubleheader. So we're tough to recover. Um, but then we got Rue on Sunday. Rue was awesome. Seven innings, probably shouldn't have given up either run. We misplayed a bunt uh, to give them their first run. We misplayed a foul ball to give them their second run. We, you know, had a chance. A uh, guy on third, no outs, didn't score. A guy on third, two, uh, one out twice, didn't score. Um, very easily could have won that game. Uh, bottom line is LaSalle outplayed us on the weekend and uh, was a good team. Um, you know, after such a hot offensive start down in Florida, Purdue, you know, really hitting over, you know, 300 for the for the, for the the weekend, what was the difference in facing LaSalle this, this past week where the offense, you know, you started out hot, but then you couldn't generate things late in, late in the games? You know, it's, it's scouting reports. Um, it was uh, – bad mindset you know you um i think uh the hitters drank the kool-aid you know thought that they were a 322 hitting team and uh you know thought that everybody was just going to challenge them and give them fastballs 2-0 1-1 uh 3-1 whatever it was and you know we put out information on that opening weekend with four games and uh give LaSalle a lot of credit they had a great game plan going into the weekend and bottom line is we didn't adjust to anything that they did anything like uh, we, we scored in the first inning of game one we scored in the first inning of game two scored in the second inning of game two and didn't do anything all day Sunday so you know at the end of the day that's uh, 16 you know 24 innings that we didn't score a run you know LaSalle had a fine pitching staff but listen this offense shouldn't go 24 innings without scoring a run Talk about one of the bright spots on the offense. We get Austin Gauthier again, his second leadoff home run of of the weekend uh, of the year. I mean, in the uh, in the second game of the doubleheader. How has he progressed in his three years here at, at Hofstra? You know, it's been an awesome process to watch uh, Austin grow and become a great player. Um, you know, I think. You know, he had a great freshman year, but, but great was playing all the time. He didn't necessarily do it stat-wise. And then he had a rough start to last season, and I feel like you could just see something click about midway through the year that he was just very determined to get better. And then um, had a great end of the year. I thought he should have been an all-conference player. 
Uh, he goes to the NECBL. He's first team all NECBL uh, shortstop in the second best league in the country. Um, had a really good fall. You know, it started out great, but I think a lot of that comes with if you ask anybody on the team, he's one of the hardest workers that we have on the team. You know, he's here early in the mornings, he's here late at nights. He has a great work ethic. Um, you know, his parents are military parents. He just has it in his head to be a hard worker, a tough kid. And uh, I'm glad that he's having all the success he's having so far early this season. He's a tough kid and uh, well deserved. And then don't want to leave out Anthony D'Onofrio. You know, obviously had to cool off from that from that six uh, six sixty start, but again, you know, a few hits over the weekend, and he's you know maintained through two weeks, you know, showing that he can really be a uh, one of the top hitters in this lineup. I agree. I think um, you know Anthony. Uh, you know, I don't know what he lowered his average to, but it's still pretty good, and still got four or five hits on the weekend, and. Um, you know, it's almost a disappointing weekend. He only hits a 300 on the weekend. And, you know, another disappointing thing about the offense was we added Rob Weishire back for games uh, one and three. And, you know, I thought Rob, uh, you know, struck immediately in the first inning with a single to left. He gave us really uh, professional at-bats, I felt like. You know, had us our two of our four hits on Sunday. And, you know, a lot of talk of if, you know, hey, wait till the offense looks uh, great when Rob answers in there. And Rob was back there and we went backwards. And, um just really shows how the mindset of everything uh, was off this weekend. You know, we, we just have to be more mentally tough, more mentally uh, more mentally prepared, you know, willing to make adjustments, not understanding people aren't just going to lay uh, pitches in there for you to get hits in Division One baseball. All right. On well, that weekend, that series is, is in the past now. Look ahead to this weekend, cross-country uh, trip to Reno, Nevada. You have uh, four games in Reno, two against – the Nevada Wolfpack, and then two against Wichita State. What's the mindset going into this weekend, and how do you attack uh, these two talented teams? You know, we got um, working on them yesterday, and uh, uh, not very thrilled to see Wichita State's pitching staff. Uh, I think it's like a two-something ERA and a you know .158 batting average against, and their Friday night guy has about 18 Ks in 10 innings, and uh, was a draft pick last year, and it's going to be all he can handle. And, and then the rest of their staff is really good. And um, I think they're 6-1 and one to start the year. They've got a really good ball club. They're winning close games, which is something we're not doing right now. Um, looked into Nevada. Nevada's always going to be really good. They're at home. I feel like they're very similar to us where, you know, they lost uh, two one-run games to Oregon this past weekend, uh, lost the one-run game the opening uh, weekend. So they're having tough times. In, in close games like we are. So it should be a, a matchup of equally um, equal teams. Uh, my first time in Nevada, I think a lot of kids' first time in Nevada. We're all excited to get there on Thursday night. Quick trip in and out, uh, doubleheader Friday, doubleheader Saturday, uh, back on Sunday morning. Um, you know, just a really neat thing, I think, to be able to go across the country and see two teams that you just really never thought you had the opportunity to see. Uh, Wichita State Shockers has been one of those uh, bucket list teams for me that I've always uh, wanted to play against and see. So I'm glad the club's getting to do that. Uh, coached by Eric Wedge, uh, you know, former big league manager of the Indians and the Blue Jays. And, um, you know, should be a really fun and exciting weekend. Uh, hope we have a better week of practice for sure. Uh, it starts today. We need to do uh, get a good two days in, a good Thursday night in there at Nevada. And um, just play a little bit better. I feel like if we control what we're making um, mistakes at, you know, things should start to go our way. All right, and that's, as Coach said, two games on Friday, two games on Saturday. You can find all the information on GoHofstra.com. Coach, good luck this weekend. And you've been watching the W.B. Mason Coaches Report on GoHofstra.com.